Hi, in this session, I'm going to show you um, some of the benefits of using Office 365 uh, in education. So we're looking at things like uh, replacing file storage on sites, um, using it for assignment setting and coursework. Um, and really, it's just about that cloud mentality and um, having everything available on any device anywhere. So currently, at the moment, you probably do have resources available in school, but they're probably available via mapped drives. So a mapped drive, um, when people go to their My Computer, they'll probably see something like uh, this, and they'll have a few map drives at the bottom there for maybe their student area um, or their, their shared drive or their personal drives. So the idea is, is a change in mentality, uh, the fact that you go through the browser or through apps to get to your work, but it's also a much more modern way of doing it. If I wanted to gain access to those map drives um, from home, I'd have to either use a custom third party SharePoint web part, which would probably only work on a Windows PC. I might be able to use a VPN or a remote desktop connection. And again, that's only going to really work properly on full desktop PCs um, or Mac devices. Um, most people now, when they work from home, they use tablets, they use phones, um, and you know those are the main devices people use. You know, you grab your phone and you might do a bit of work. So Office 365 has all the um, the apps for Office available on Android and iOS, and that includes Word, PowerPoint, uh, OneNote, um, Excel. So you've got all those apps available and they're for free if you're a student um, or a teacher um, for Office 365 education. So once you've got your documents inside SharePoint, uh, inside Microsoft Classroom, inside OneDrive, you no longer have to rely on that uh, server file server infrastructure that you've got in school um, to provide that service. You might still use those drives for things like media files and things that may be a bit too big to upload to the cloud at the moment. But for most things, and for your Office documents, the best place to put them is inside SharePoint and OneDrive. So I'm going to show you, quickly show you SharePoint. So one way that you might take advantage of using SharePoint, so this has got a custom branding on it. You don't have to have custom branding, you could just use it out of the box. So if I go to the subject area, so I've created these subject areas from my um, MIS data, so in this case, sims.net, and I've automatically permissioned all these subsites. You could just manually create these sites if you wanted to. You don't have to do it in an automated way like the service that we provide. So if I go into the, the business study sites, I've got an area in here for resources, for pupils, uh, so that would replace my pupil shared drive. And inside here, I could then break that down into year groups. And I could also use some custom columns to tag those with curriculum subjects, topics, and year group. And then once you've got, got it uh, tagged by um, you know, things like topic, I could then put in custom views in this library and I could group it by topic just to make it easier to find those documents. So again, the benefits of having your documents inside SharePoint is you can create your documents um, inside the browser. So I've got a custom template set up there. Let me take you to um, the staff resource area where, which I haven't modified. So you can create your documents inside the browser um, or using the apps. So I can create a Word document, an Excel document, PowerPoint, OneDrive, Excel survey, uh, subfolders within this document library. And if I create a new Word document, that opens up inside the browser. I don't need Office installed on this machine. Um, I can edit it in Word if I want to, and so I can use the full version, but this is pretty much the full version that you get inside the cloud. Um, so I can create it, I can rename it at the top here. And when I go back to um, my business study site, document library, um, I can see that I've created that document inside here. Refresh it, it's called test document. And inside here, if people click on it, they can open it up in the app, they can open it up in the browser, or they can open it up in Office. So they can use any device which previously they couldn't use. And the search functionality inside here is great as well. Um, if I want to search for um, text inside a document, um, I can do that. So SharePoint will automatically crawl inside documents. So even if you haven't named your document correctly, 
you'll still get um, the results appear um, when your search comes back. So that's your shared um, document area. So that would replace your, your shared drives. For personal areas, you've got something called OneDrive, which is another app inside Office 365. And this is very similar to SharePoint. You can access both SharePoint and OneDrive uh, from the OneDrive app that you can get on iOS or Android. Um, and you can also download the SharePoint app just to get to the SharePoint sites. For the OneDrive app, to be honest, you can actually get to any documents inside SharePoint as well. You can see the whole structure and you can drill down into it. So again, benefits of using OneDrive, you can create these documents inside the browser or using the app. You can upload them from your PC and you can even sync this folder so you can sync it with a folder on your PC so you can work offline as well. In fact, most of the apps also include an option to download your documents and work on them offline and then you can upload them uh, when you get an internet, internet connection again. So if you're working on the train, you can sync your documents down, work on them and then when you connect back to the internet, they'll sync back up again. So the other aspect of this besides your personal storage is Microsoft Classroom. So this is a new app. Um, it's still in preview, but it's very, very close to being properly released. Um, that's February 2017. So this is Microsoft Classroom. You can see you've got your groups down the side here that I'm a teacher of. Um, and if I was there as a student, I'll see the groups that I take part in. Now you can do this automatically from your Sims data, or you could just manually create your new classes in here and pick your pupils on there. So it's up to you, you know, what sort of level of complexity you have. Um, so I can see my assignments are in progress for this group. I can also filter it by the ones that are completed. So if I take this example of one that was completed earlier, I can see a summary of all the student marks. If there's been a group conversation, I see that in the bottom right corner of here, I can see the resources that were used for this uh, particular assignment. And then I can actually go to submissions and see individual student submissions. So I can see that Susan submitted this Word document back to me. And I've also uh, had a conversation with Susan about that particular piece of work. And then I've graded it and I've posted that mark back to her. So when she logs in, she can see those marks. And as a teacher, I can export those marks. I can do whatever I want to, you know, to import them back into my MIS system if I wanted to. I'll just quickly show you how easy it is to create an assignment in Microsoft Classroom as a teacher. You just click New Assignment and put in a title for that assignment. Um, you can put in the details for that assignment. So these could be instructions on what they have to do. Please complete the worksheet. I can put in when this particular assignment is due. So it might be Friday at three o'clock. And then I, I can attach some files either from my computer. Um, I could attach them from my OneDrive and that will open up my OneDrive and I can you know, pick, a, pick a document out here. And then I can decide, do I make a copy for each student? So provide it as a worksheet that they fill in, or I could just leave it as a resource for the students and make it read only. Um, and I can post it to one of my classes, or I can post it to multiple classes. So you know, if you teach uh, three year 10 English groups, you could post that assignment out to all three groups. Uh, in one go, so you're not having to replicate that work. And then I can also allow students to discuss with each other that particular assignment, or I can disable that. Uh, click done, and that creates the assignment. Again, if the students got the app installed on the phone, they'll get a new notification that they've got a new assignment. So I've got the Microsoft Classroom app installed on my Android device. And because we set that assignment earlier, you can see that I've received two notifications. Test assignment was posted. I'm a member of both classes, so I've got both of those notifications. And if I tap on one of those notifications, it opens up the app and I can see that um, that particular assignment, uh, Test Tony, is there at the top. And I can click on it and I can see um, what work I've got to do for that particular assignment. I can see a list of all the other ones that are due this week. And you'll see that I get a notification when somebody's posted assignments. I can see when one's been updated, um, when one was graded. So I've got Wayne County Fair was graded by Tony Phillips. So you can also see for the assignments currently in progress, 
I can also set a reminder. So I could have a reminder one day before that's due. That will set a reminder and I'll get a notification pop up when that work is due. Um, if I want to do my work um, on here, I can press add and I can choose a file from my device. I can create a new document using the apps or I can take a photo. And when I've finished the work, I can press mark as done. And that submits the assignment as completed to the teacher. So I can see the previous um, assignments that were set as well. So I can select one of these that's been graded. You can see I've got 89 points out of 100 for that. Um, my work's there as well. And if I press on the speech bubble in the top right corner, so there's no class discussions for that assignment, but if I click on teacher, I can see the conversation between myself and the tutor. So Susan said, is this any good? And the teacher myself has put, yes, that looks great. As part of uh, these groups that you get created, um, you also get a calendar for that class, a conversations area, um, and that opens up Outlook, and you also get a class notebook. So class notebooks, um, quite interesting. It takes a few seconds to, to set up. Uh, so I'll just create that. So this will create a, a class notebook for this group, 10 English 3. And inside that class notebook, you'll get a tab for each student. You also get a collaboration tab where people can work on stuff together. And you'll get the teacher tab where they can actually put some resources on for the students that the students can actually see and uh, use as their, their resource to base their work on. So you could use this class notebook for students taking notes in the class. So it could be uh, a mini exercise book that's online. You might also use it for things like homework submissions or coursework or just, just general feedback for each student. You could use that as you know, a communication platform for that student. So if I open up this, this OneNote file, you'll see it's, this is a good example. So we've got three students down the side. They get created automatically when I create the one, uh, OneNote file. Each of these students will only see their own tab, but the teacher can see everybody's. And inside here, I, I've, I can decide which uh, sections I create in here. So I've created assignments, handouts, class notes, and quizzes. And then the student can actually just enter uh, their reply straight back into there. Or they can use it, like I say, as an exercise book. They can create sub pages within that section. So it can become very, very complex document um, once it's been used. The collaboration area here, this is an area where all students can work on work together. So it's good for group work. You know, if you need a few students to work on files together, they can create their own pages in here and they can all work on, on a document together. They can see what everyone's doing. You know, you can build up those, those project group works together. The content library, this is, an, this is an area that teachers create and the students can see it, but they can't edit it. So this is your content resource area for that particular group. So back in the back in Microsoft Classroom, you've also got a file area. This opens up a SharePoint document library where you can just throw files in there for to be used as resources. You've got the resources from the assignments automatically in there as well. And then you can manage this group. So if I wanted to, I could change you know, the color of it, the icon, and the details and description of that class. Um, and I could also put in you know, a nice banner cover photo that goes across the top of that, uh, of that particular group. And if I go to the notebook uh, tab, if I wanted to, I could add, add extra sections to that notebook uh, that I've already created. So it's a great learning tool. If you download the app for Microsoft Classroom, you can get that on iOS and Android.